again, we are talking about niche-based uh, uh, species distribution modeling. Uh, remember that uh, in the last, in a few of the last segments, we have been talking about this uh, geographical representation of what takes place uh, in the distribution of your species. We need to refer now to the environmental part of this, a, a most essential part of uh, the, the, the the entire field of uh, species distribution modeling slash niche modeling is that you refer all the time uh, back and forth between geographical space and environmental space. Uh, the environments that are associated to each one of these regions or to this region or to this region uh, have um, those environments are what they've been called traditionally niches. Perhaps not the most fortunate word because there are all other meanings for that term, but uh, we will stick to it. And uh, I'm going to be talking all the time between environments and niches. Okay, what are those environments? Well, first one, I'm going to talk about the environment that is associated to the A circle. Remember, A circle represents the conditions that are favorable to the species conditions in terms of temperatures, precipitations, radiation, certain aspects of soil, um, uh, um, features of the environment that are not very dynamic, that do not change very quickly. And uh, those things can be represented in environmental space. Uh, the thing that is called the fundamental niche or in F are the set of all the, the limits, the tolerance limits for the species in the multivariate space of environmental variables. That can be temperature, precipitation, uh, extremes of those two, radiation, features of topography, things like that. It's a multivariate space multivariate that is due to George Evelyn Hutchinson, a great ecologist of the 40s, 50s and 60s and he invented both the, the idea that you can see the niches in a multivariate space and this idea of the fundamental niche. What is a fundamental niche? It's a set of conditions that define where your species can survive without making any reference to competitors, predators, mutualists, other, other, other things like that. Uh, the shapes of these uh, environmental spaces normally, they are extremely complicated, very difficult to represent uh, like so simply as I am doing here. But we can do an attempt. Uh, there is going to be one segment of this series where you will see in the computer uh, and we will rotate a uh, multi-dimensional representation of these um, uh, environmental spaces which are horribly complicated and in fact they are so horribly complicated that they have a beauty of their own. So, imagine that you have just two variables, say temperature and precipitation. Inside this space there will be points which are the combinations of space, the combinations of precipitation and temperature that actually occur in geography at a given period of time. This is changing all the time because climate is changing all the time, with or without us, it's changing. So the, the, the shape of this cloud is extremely dynamic. Now, inside this cloud, there is a shape that we know normally, the, the few ones that have been obtained by experiment, uh, using, for example, mosquitoes, or uh, water fleas, or certain plants, have kind of ellipsoidal shapes. So this is a fundamental niche. Species. And those climates that actually exist inside the fundamental niche are extremely important for the modeling process. These dots here are called 
the existing fundamental niche, a concept that was in, invented by two uh, paleoecologists, um, Jackson and Overcast. So um, what you do when you do the niche modeling is that you actually sample geography and inside this region you are going to find some observations. The trick, the knack, the art or the science of uh, niche-based species distribution modeling is to be able from, to go from points inside this region to a prediction of the area of distribution of the species or the invadable area of a species and you will be able to calculate the two different niches that um, you have here because to this um, GO there is a corresponding niche which is a realized niche and to the region A there is a corresponding, corresponding niche which would be this niche here it's uh, quite uh, quite important. I cannot stress how important it is that you remember the different things that can be modeled. Uh, when you do the actual modeling in a, in a computer using any of the programs that are available, there are, there are more than 15 different ways of doing this. You have to remember what are you modeling. Are you trying to model GO? Are you trying to model the fundamental niche? existing niche? Are you trying to model the realized niche? What are the, the relations between the three? Several of the following uh, chapters of this series will uh, deal uh, in more detail with this kind of things. We're going to explore different versions of the BAM uh, diagram, explaining what's the meaning of those different versions in terms of the biology of the species and what particular challenges different versions of this diagram place or pose to, to the modeler if you are trying to do to apply Maxent or GARP or BioClean or GAMS or GLEANS or there are many, many methods. Uh, the kind of challenge you are, you are uh, going to face depends on the different positions of these circles in the PAM diagram. This will be the topic of a uh, next uh, chapter in this little series. Thank you very much.